This hurricane is going to come and it is going to go very quickly, so it won't be like Irene, which came and just sat around for a long time. The other thing is that there's still model guidance. You may have noticed on the track that it shifted slightly to the west today. Still, the model that the Hurricane Center is basing their track on, pretty much the TVCN keeps it just east of Hatteras. The model that we've been kind of leaning toward, the H Wharf, brings us in around Harker's Island, Cape Lookout, and across down East Carteret County and across the Sound. I do want to jump ahead to 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll look at noon. The rain bands begin to come in. Our greatest threat will likely be tornadoes possible from Wilmington to Jacksonville to Carteret County, starting at about 9 tomorrow night through about uh, 3 o'clock early Friday morning, and then it is gone. And this is, again, a classic Category 1 hurricane headed towards us here in Eastern Carolina. Let's kind of time it out, the arrival of it. We are going to be looking at it as a Category 1 hurricane, but I got to tell you, I am concerned, and I've been having concern a lot of the, this week as far as the potential for strengthening with this storm system, especially from what I'm seeing from the satellite picture this morning. Let's put it this way. It's at least going to be a strong one, maybe a two it's that potential for category two and we're talking maybe a strong category two storm here that i would have been concerned about from the get-go with this storm it was in an environment where it could really develop and explode and it looks like the national hurricane center is now kind of realizing that as well. Thunderstorms, big thunderstorms as it heads. We're out here at Emerald Isle and things have really started to pour down in literally the last four minutes of us speaking. Amber, yeah, that's right. Literally in just the past five minutes, things have gotten absolutely ferocious out here. We just saw at least 10 or 15 people literally run from the beach into their hotel rooms and elsewhere. The sand is really picking up and getting stirred around. I'm actually wearing shorts right now and it's actually a little bit painful. The eye wall is just about to make landfall yep. right now towards Beaufort. Beaufort. And I'm going to put a marker right here just to show you that this is Beaufort. And we are seeing the eye wall right here. And part of that eye wall is starting to make landfall on the coast right there. So that right there that you're seeing, that's the most intense part of all of this. Arthur hit North Carolina's outer banks the hardest, flooding highways, uprooting trees, and knocking down power lines with winds topping 100 miles an hour. The storm also tore up the main road, it tossed around boats like bathtub toys, and dumped sand dunes on doorsteps. Even so, by first light, it was clear Arthur struck only a glancing blow. There have been no casualties or serious injuries reported. I'd say we've been very lucky. This sign said, what hurricane, as vacationers salvaged what was left of their holiday weekend. And we'll show you that the H Wharf, that's the one that we're kind of leaning toward in the office, is a little bit further inland, but the official track's just offshore. So what are you looking at here? Maybe 30, 40 miles? Uh, that's not a big distance, so that means basically east of Highway 17, whether it's just offshore, whether it's inland, you're going to get the impacts from this. So what will those impacts be? That's, that's what you want to know.